Hey guys, it's Monet with Take Life, and today is the day I've kind of been waiting for all summer. Today's video is going to be me putting together my 2019 2020 teacher planner. I am so excited, and before I share with you my process, I do want to kind of give a few tips. Now, before we jump into the tips for this video, go ahead at this time, if you have not already, and subscribe. Like, I don't know what you're waiting on. This is the perfect time. You're already watching, so go ahead and click the subscribe button. Um, also, go ahead and make sure that when you are enjoying my lovely videos, to press that like button. And as always, world changers, I love talking to you in the comment section below. So, let's jump into these tips. Tip number one for putting together an effective teacher planner. Number one, buy you a teacher planner. The thing about it is you want to choose a planner that actually works for you, okay? When you are shopping, make sure you preview the planner itself. Make sure that it has all the sheets that you need. Now, I personally, before I started building my own planner, I did purchase a pre-built planner, like the ones you find, the happy planners at uh, Michael's. Um, and I personally didn't like it because this is before they had the teacher edition. So I did a lot of editing to the personal happy planner because it wasn't necessarily for teachers. Now they actually have teacher planners. There are also some great planners on TPT, which is actually where I started as a seller. And I know those to be wonderful as well. And you always wanna definitely check out those planners that are created by people that teach in your grade range because nine times out of 10, they're thinking about you or teachers like themselves. Now, I personally created my own and I love my planners to death. I do have them available in my store. You can check those out. You have the black and white and you also have the marble elegance, which is the one that I am actually using for this video and for the school year. I absolutely love it. It has all of my needs. We're working with it. The next thing that you're going to need is your platform. So are you going to be putting it inside of a binder? Are you going to be using a arc system? Are you gonna be putting it on your iPad or your tablet? What are you going to do? And honestly, I love the versatility of a lot of the planners today. You could purchase on Etsy, TPT. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And you can definitely be brave Yes, be brave and build your own teacher planner. And that way, you know, it specifically fits you and your needs. So I personally, I was going the digital route, but let me tell you a little bit about myself. I love writing. Like I journal every day, sometimes multiple times a day. I love the feeling of pen to paper. I don't, I don't, I'm just weird. Okay. I'm, I'm not with the the 2019, you know, but honestly, I did try the digital planner and I liked how you could customize it. Like how I had those stickers in my planner. I loved how I could like just crop and put them on. And I mean, it's colorful and it's fun. Yes. But writing honestly gives me a sense of peace. And I also like that I could put my hand on it. Like I could physically like turn the pages. It's something about it, guys. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm old school, but I really like turning pages. So um, I actually bought me a new art binder and people, I have three now. I have turquoise, tan, and this year I'm doing all black because it fits my classroom theme and I am that type of person that has to match. So I went to Staples and I bought me a new art binder along with some black dividers. I mean, this binder is going to be beautiful. The third tip that I am going to recommend for building a um, awesome, effective teacher planner is once you have that binder, if you are someone that is downloading, meaning you have to print it and build it yourself, go ahead and on your phone or on a sheet of paper and write out how you want to organize it. That was the first thing that I actually did before filming this video and putting together my binder in my phone. I um, pulled up the sheets so I could look at the sheets and then I said, okay, the first sheet is going to be this and then this and then this and then the divider. And then in this section, it'll be this and this and this. And so I was very organized and I really got a chance to think about my day to day for the upcoming year and how I need some things quicker than others. And so you just want to, I don't know, be ready, be prepared. So uh, those are my top, top 
three tips, nothing very big and complicated. Of course, make it your own and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Okay guys, so the first thing that I am doing is pulling up my notes on my phone that show what sheets I want to print and where do I want to put those sheets inside of my ARC binder. After I've checked my list, I then grab my prints and I make sure that I have printed out each sheet that I need and I also check to make sure that it is in order. The items that I am using are my Staples Arc Binder and it is in a leather black. I also have my printed Marble Elegance Planner, my gold metal staple rings because I will be switching them out, some new Bink flare pins. They also have some cute adhesive notes that I can put inside of my binder and I love post-its. To help with organization, I also have some black dividers. And lastly, I have a pack of sheet protectors that I will be using throughout the year to insert um, my newsletter, syllabus, my workstation, um, plans, just things that I may have temporarily, I can put them inside the sheet protector. So those are the items that I'll be using. Now you see I have my hole puncher for the ARC system. I've had this for a couple of years and each time I need to create a new planner or I need to put something inside of my ARC binder, I pull it out and I use it. It's just like any other hole puncher. Now what I am doing again is double checking. There is nothing worse than getting started and after you have put holes in everything, you realize something should have been flipped over. It's not falling the way you want it. So that's why I have it in this layout so that as I'm flipping, I'm imagining it being inside of the art binder and I'm trying to make sure that everything is lined up and all of my sections are in place. So now that I have double checked all of my printables and made sure that each sheet is exactly where it needs to be, I am now going to organize it by sections. So now I'm thinking about how I have five dividers and what those five sections will be inside of my ARC binder. So overall, I have about six sections and I'm gonna later show you how I decide to put everything inside of the ARC binder. But I do have my 
um, basic information where it has school information and student roster and student information. Then it follows by the calendar. And then I follow that with um, the parent contact log. Then I have a note sections, a planning section, and a small group section. Once all the sections have been put together, I then start to put my holes inside of the sheets. And as you see, I am all up in the camera, but I really wanted to make sure that the margins were correct because if you're not careful, sometimes you can have too much um, at the top. And I know it doesn't probably make any sense, but if you have an arc binder, then you know what I'm talking about. So you have to be really careful where you start to put your... Um, your tabs in so that is even and in the middle of the binder. Okay, so now we're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean out my Staples Arc binder. It does come with sheets already inside, but I'm not going to use those. So I'm just going to gently take them out and clean out my binder to make sure it's ready for my Marble Elegance Planner. Once I have all of the sheets out of the system, I then go ahead again, just brushing it off, make sure it's clean. And now I have to remove the black rings. As you saw earlier, I do have gold rings that I desire to use because it goes along with my color theme, which is like black, gold, vanilla, peach, and of course my plant life. So. Again, I just wanted to color coordinate, so I am going to take out the black rings and I am going to put in the gold rings. I am also going ahead and preparing my dividers. They do come with um, adhesive tabs, so you write out what that divider is um, organizing in that section. And of course, you adhere them like you would any other divider system. So I'm just getting everything ready, so once I start building, it's really fast and simple. So I also wanted to show you that I'm not only removing the black rings because of their color, but I'm also removing them because of their size. I believe that's probably about a half inch or one inch, but then once I take those out and put in the gold rings, I believe it's going to give me about one and a half, two inches. So that's definitely going to give me more space to work with once I put all of my papers inside of the system. Okay guys, so now it is time to put the sheets in and this is going to go by super fast because I've already organized it by sections. It already has the holes on the side and so now all I'm doing is popping it into place. I did use thicker white printing paper. I believe the weight is about 28. Um, I believe regular is 20 and then there, there is also a weight of 22, but I decided to print on 28, I believe. And I also um, made sure that the sections aren't too thick, but because the paper is a little thicker, it makes it super easy uh, and durable to put them inside of the metal rings. Once I have put the section in, I just go in and I press down 
on the tabs to make sure that none of them are bent or folded make sure everything is smooth i do that in the front and then i also flip it to the back and i make sure that the back side is good as well this first section is like my basic information so the teacher information which will be um you know the school information the directory the class rosters and then it gets into student information and passwords so i want to note that the dividers are super thick like i know they're going to last a really long time so now I have my second section, which is going to be my calendar. And when I organize my binder, I like to think about what is priority, what needs to be at the very front, and then what items do I need to put at the very back. Again, it's always going to be easy to find my sections because I have these dividers. But again, I really do think about what I need to put my hand on the quickest. After my student information and basic information, the second section is my calendar. So you see right now I have my year at the glance and behind that I have another year at a glance but it allows me to write major events on the lines. So as you see, this section is a little bit thicker than my first section, so that's why I put it in in two parts. I do want to share that my calendar section includes three months, that is July, August, September. I also have weekly uh, sheets for the month of August, and then I also have reflection and journal sheets inside of my calendar. And I like to do that because it keeps the size down. If I were to print all 12 months in each week for those 12 months, it would be too big. So behind my calendar section, I am now putting in my planning section. So this is where you will see my 6x5 planning template. I do that because... I don't like for my lesson plans to be mixed up with my calendar. I know some people like to have their lesson plans next to the week behind their calendar and that's just a little too much for me. So I just like to turn to my planning tab and then have all of my lesson plans be right there versus mixing it in with the calendar. I just don't think that that will work for me. That's a little bit too much information at one time. So I have printed about 12 of these and it is front and back. Mind you, I have to plan for two grades. Uh, so I believe the front will be fifth and then the back will be six and I'll just continue to do it in that rotation. You also see that I have an assessment sheet and a mastery sheet because I do want to track what, how I am assessing, what I am assessing, how students are performing on the assessments, and then I also want to track mastery weekly and that lets me know how to form my small groups. So that is what you saw and those two sheets are available in the instruction pack that I have now included um, on my website. So in this next section, you will find the small groups information. In the very front, I have my meet the teacher organizer, which is great for when you're organizing who will come to you, when, what ability level do they have, what's the task and materials. And then also behind that, I have my small groups log tracker. So this helps me to go into more detail about how students performed while they were with me at meet the teacher. I don't do small groups in the sense of centers so that's why I did not print the centers planning sheet because I don't do centers in my class students receive work station plans and they do that each week
So behind my small group tab is my notes tab. And in this um, section, this is where I have my professional development sheet. I have my meeting notes. And then I have printed just a few note sheets as well that are front and back. So that way, whenever I am going to a meeting or I am just um, studying or doing some research, I can turn to my note section and I can record down whatever I need and have it at my disposal whenever I'm ready to actually use it. I do want to add that what I usually like to do once I um, am finished with my calendar sheets, I'm finished with my meeting notes, I don't throw those things away. I file them away in my file cabinet so I can always have it for my records and that way I always have space inside of my notebook because it's eventually going to come out and get stored in my file cabinet so that I could put new sheets in and have everything I need. So that's usually how I keep the weight and size down inside of my ARC binder. The next section that I have that I always have in the back, and it's usually the last section, is parent contact log. And I'm not trying to be funny. That's not the last thing I do, but I, I just honestly like to have that towards the back. So whenever a parent calls or whenever I'm doing a conference or, or anything of that nature, I know I can always go to the back of my notebook and I'll have all of my parent contact information in the back. Okay guys, so we're not quite done yet. There are some important sheets that I need to put inside of my ARC binder. And the very first sheet that I need to put in in the front is going to be my class schedule. I usually like to laminate this and put it inside, but I decided to just go ahead and put it in for the sake of time. So on this, it shows the daily schedule and rotation system for fifth and sixth grade. It also has how I organize my writing, reading, and social studies time in my personal block. The next sheet that I need to put inside, behind my year at a glance, I am going to insert my school calendar. That way, when I am planning, I can look at the dates that I have for breaks and professional work days, and I can include them when I am planning out events for my work and professional life. Okay, so for the planning section, I need to put in my unit one plans for fifth grade English and sixth grade English. This unit plan has everything I'm going to be doing and focusing on for August, September, and October. I think it's like the second week in October. So that's how long the unit one plan is for fifth and sixth grade. I personally made this scope and sequence myself. I do want to note that this isn't like set in stone, but it is an awesome guide. So when I start looking for resources, when I start looking for videos, I'll know exactly what skill and strategy we're working on and focusing on. And of course, as I work with students if I see that they're struggling with something I may add to it or I may see once I meet my students or we're learning that they don't really need um, something be, to be taught for one or two weeks they just need it for maybe two or three lessons in that week and then we can move forward. Okay, so the last thing that I am putting in is something that is really important and makes this binder complete, and that is my grade sheets. So what I have done is I've created just a very simple grade recorder that I am putting in. As you saw, I ran out of black dividers and I had a peach one from another arc system that I used before. So I decided that would be great contrast um, and just help me to 
um, be able to identify this section easily. So as I am grading my exit tickets, um, and then also during like my observations for participation points, I can log it right there. So this binder literally has everything I need for each day inside. As soon as I get to work, I open it and I look at it, I get things ready and I get my mind wrapped around the day. As I'm recording things, when I'm going to meetings, I grab it and I go and it's just that simple. It's really not that thick and it can fit inside of my personal work bag So this is the finished product. I really love it. I'm happy with the size. And one of the great things about the Arc Binder is that you can always customize it and make it as big or small as you need it to be. It is super durable. That leather is really thick and those dividers are as well. And I know it's going to last the test of time. So thank you for watching today's video and remember to tick on if you have any questions please leave them down below and remember to answer the question of the day thank you for watching so the question of the day is what planner are you using to plan your upcoming school year